The good word today is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 19 and 20. Now, we considered these verses in our last study, and we want to consider them again today for another aspect of truth. You know, each verse in the Bible is like a beautiful jewel, and you can hold this jewel up to the light and see the beauty of each facet. And so it is with the Word of God. Last time we considered verses 19 and 20 as a motive for Christian service. Jesus is coming again, and you and I ought to be faithful to win souls to Christ. But Paul uses a word here that's very interesting. He uses the word crown. Crown. Paul is picturing himself as running a race, and he sees himself achieving the goal, and the saints are his reward. He receives the crown of rejoicing because of his faithfulness as a soul winner. Now, Paul often uses athletic terms in his writing. I'm sure that Paul knew what it was to watch the uh, Olympic Games and the Corinthian Games over in Corinth. Uh, Several times Paul talks about running and wrestling. And I I want today to take some of these uh, comparisons that Paul uses in athletics. Some of you may be very athletically inclined. Personally, I'm not. I enjoy watching a baseball game, especially if they're winning. But I myself am not an athlete. I, I thank God for those who are and for the good Christian testimony they have. But Paul must have had a keen interest in sports because over and over again he uses athletic pictures to give us spiritual truth. He's talking here about the race, running the race. Now back in Paul's day, the only person who could run a race in the games was a freed man. A slave couldn't. He had to be a citizen of the country before he could run in the games. Of course, you and I are citizens of heaven. We do not run the race in order to be saved. We run the race because we are saved. When you were saved, God picked you up and put you on a solid rock and said, start running. Win the prize. I have a goal for your life. And just as a runner stays in his lane and runs to reach the goal, so each Christian has a lane to run in, a life to live, a ministry to fulfill, and we should run to reach the goal. There are at least five requirements to be a winning Christian. I mean a Christian who's going to get a reward. All those who are born again are going to get to heaven, but not all born-again people are going to have rewards when they get to heaven. Some are going to be saved like Lot, as by fire. Everything Lot lived for was burned up. I don't want you to be that way, and I don't want to be that way. Let's look now at these requirements for being a winning Christian athlete in the race of life. The first requirement is here in chapter 2, verses 19 and 20, delight. The athlete has to delight. He has to rejoice. He has to enjoy his sport or he cannot do his best. Now, Paul said here, I went to Thessalonica. I was persecuted. I was run out of town. I didn't quit. I rejoice that I have the privilege of serving the Lord. Do you rejoice in serving the Lord? Do you think that an athlete would go through all that he goes through if he didn't enjoy the game? No one enjoys scrimmaging. No one enjoys going through exercise. No one enjoys the dietary disciplines. But if you enjoy the game, you don't mind it at all. Delight. Paul said, I rejoice to have the privilege of serving the Lord. I feel sorry for those who try to serve the Lord and don't enjoy it. The second requirement is discipline, and Paul talks about this back in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. If you have your Bible there with you, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery, every man who wants to be a capable athlete, is temperate in all things. Now they do it. To obtain a corruptible crown, when you won the race in Greece, they gave you a laurel wreath. After a few days, it had faded away. But we, an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. So fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body. I beat my body black and blue, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. And the word castaway here means disqualified. Paul's picture here is that of an athlete disciplining himself. He said anybody can run, but only one can win. 
Yet all Christians can win a prize if they'll discipline themselves. He's talking here about the discipline of the body. An athlete has to be careful what he eats. He must exercise his body. He can't eat what he wants to or drink what he wants to. He can't go to bed when he wants to. He has to be under discipline. So with a Christian. You know, if every Christian would put as much discipline into the Christian life as sports people do in athletics, we'd have revival in our churches. Christians are flabby spiritually. They're sloppy spiritually. They don't care what they feed themselves spiritually. They don't give themselves exercise as they ought to spiritually. And consequently, they're not disciplined. Samson lost his crown because he wasn't disciplined. And you and I can lose our crown if we're not disciplined. Delight and discipline are two requirements to be a winning Christian. The third is direction. Philippians chapter 3, Paul talks again about running the race. Philippians chapter 3, let me read what he says from verses 12 through 15. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, I haven't arrived yet, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Paul said, I want to get my hands on that for which God got his hands on me. I want to fulfill the purpose for which I was saved. That to me is a tremendous thought that God has a purpose for every one of our lives that nobody else can fulfill. Wouldn't it be terrible to live your life and miss that purpose? Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I haven't arrived yet. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. Direction. Direction. Can you imagine a person running the wrong way on the racetrack? Now, many students think that Paul's talking here about the chariot race, and probably he is. In the chariot race, they didn't have a beautiful chariot such as you see in comic strips. It was really just two wheels with a platform. And the rider, the charioteer, had to stand on that platform and brace himself and hold on to the reins and keep that chariot in the right lane. If he wanted to have an accident, all he had to do was look back and looking back would cause an accident. Paul compares this to Christians. This one thing I do. Not these million things I do. This one thing I do. Paul's life was focused on one thing, the will of God. Far too many Christians today are wrapped up in too many things, and by the way, too many church programs are too busy. Too many Christians are on detours. That little poem that we hear every once in a while, Mary had a little lamb, it would have been a sheep, but it joined a local gospel church and died from lack of sleep. This one thing I do, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. Direction. Is there direction in your life? Have you found that one goal that God wants you to reach in your life? What is it he wants you to be? What is it he wants you to do? Delight, discipline, direction are requirements to be a winning Christian who is going to get the prize from the Lord Jesus. Now, the fourth requirement is in Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. That's determination, dedication, determination. Wherefore, Hebrews 12, 1, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Oh, how many Christians give up and faint. Now, an athlete can't afford to do this. If he's out running the race or in the football game or wherever he may be, he cannot afford to quit. It's always too soon to quit. Sometimes like you feel like quitting. It's a rough road that we're on. Back here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul said Satan hindered us, and that word hindered means he made the road rough. He threw barricades, obstacles in the way. Someone has said that there are obstacles in the way of every Christian, but no obstacle needs to stay in the way. God can remove every obstacle for us if we're determined to run the race. It's easy to give up and faint. Very few want to run with you. Very few are going to encourage you. 
But Paul said, I'm going to run the race with determination. Determination. A Christian cannot quit. Now, I'm preaching to myself. There are times I feel like quitting. Jesus said men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, Hebrews 12 gives us three encouragements to keep on going. In verse 1, he says, look around at all the witnesses. Who are these? The people in chapter 11. All the great saints of the Old Testament. Abraham could have quit. He kept on going. David could have quit. He kept on going. Moses. Moses had a rough time. He, quit. he kept on going. They had their ups and downs. But he says, look around and see how many people have endured, and they've won the prize. Then he says, look ahead, verse 2, the joy that was set before him. Look ahead, the joy of one day standing before the Lord and knowing that he will give us his reward. It'll be worth it. We sing in one of our songs, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Now look, friend, God is not going to give you your reward now. You're going to see some blessing now. Sure you are. I thank God for the joy and the blessing we've seen in our ministries. But our real reward is yet to come. God doesn't always pay on payday in this life. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see him. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrows will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Determination. Then he says, here's a third encouragement. Look around at all the winners. Look ahead to the prize. Look away to Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Think of what he had to go through. Whatever the Lord Jesus went through, you and I go through. He's been through everything we're going to go through. They tried to kill him. They laughed at him. They called him crazy. They called him a drunk, called him a glutton. They lied about him. They did everything they could to keep him from achieving his goal, and they'll do the same thing to us. Now, the Lord Jesus has already run the race and won He's called the pioneer of our salvation. He's opened the way for us to follow. Whatever he starts, he finishes. Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And so the word of God says, have determination. Don't quit. When you feel like quitting, remember, the saints of the Old Testament, God saw them through. The apostles and prophets, God saw them through. Jesus, God saw him through, and God will see you through. Well, here are four requirements to to winning the prize. Delight, we must enjoy running with the Lord Jesus. Discipline, direction, determination. Finally, duty, we have to obey the rules. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, it says this, And if a man also strive for mastery, he's talking about an athlete, Yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. You know, a fellow could run in the Olympic races and win the race and not get the prize if they discovered he'd broken the rules. Jim Thorpe had this experience. In 1912, he went to Stockholm for the Olympics and he won the key events. In 1913, he had to give the prizes back because they found out he'd been playing semi-pro baseball with another team. And he lost the prize because he broke the rules. We can't serve God any way we want to. If we're going to run with the Lord and serve him, we've got to obey his rules. The end does not justify the means. We don't do evil that good may come from it. And the runner who does not have duty, who does not obey the rules, is not going to get the prize. There are no shortcuts in Christian service. These, then, are the five requirements for being a winning Christian. I trust that they'll be found in our lives. This is What's the Good Word? My name is Warren Wearsby. I'm the pastor of the Calvary Baptist Church in Covington, Kentucky. And the Lord willing, next time we'll turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3.